All right, guys, welcome back to another video in the series. We will briefly talk about virtual bones, but we won't truly discuss them until the next video. The reason why is because it's actually more important that we go over the nuances of additive animations. So I'll cover virtual bones in the sense that they are important to understanding these nuances. But other than that, we're mostly going to be discussing the nuances of additive animations. So in the additive animations video, I discussed with you guys that additive animations are just differences between one animation and another. In this case, an animation and a pose. Those differences in rotations and locations will be applied on the animation that we apply that additive on to. And so when we offset the arm on the animation we're applying it to, you'll see how it affects the additive and how it comes out. In such situations like this, you can correct this using virtual bones. And so I'll just go ahead and open this up. Now this would be, this would probably be the order of operations you wouldn't want to choose, but I put it there just so you could see the differences. And so you'll see how we fix that using virtual bones. In order to understand why this works, it's important that you understand the nuances of additive animations when you're creating them. So the reason why this worked was basically just because, and I'll go ahead and do this. Actually, let's offset that. Yeah. There we go. I have to pause the game, not the preview. So this bone right here coming off of this is the virtual bone. And you might be asking if additive animations are being uh, applied, why are these not getting offset? Well, the simple answer is they are getting offset, but their offsets are relative to their parent bone. And what that means is that they will be offset as they were in the additive animation that was applied. But their actual positions will be relative to this hand. And so when this hand moves, that virtual bone will move with it and maintain that relative offset. This is actually a good thing. So it allows us to use those to correct hand placement while still maintaining the underlying animation and how things are set up on it. So it's important for you to understand that. And the reason why is because it's related in some part to the nuances of additive animation creation. So when you're creating additive animations, if, uh, depending on the context, so if you're creating this additive animation for the context of holding a rifle, which is a two-handed weapon, it requires both hands on the rifle. In such a situation as that, hand positioning is important. If you specifically want to apply this additive animation to the arms, then it's in the hands as well then it's very important that in such a situation you you should also make sure that the hands are not offset in relation to each other because as we talked about when you apply an additive animation any difference between the the additive animation and the base that you chose for it the reference pose any difference between those will be applied and so if there is an offset on the hand then it will be applied to the hand on the animation that you apply it to. So because of this, because of this, if you offset 
both hands proportionally to each other, then they will stay proportional, proportionate to each other on the animation after they are applied to it. If this is not the case, then the hand the hands will not move in synchronicity with each other. They will become desynchronized and one hand will come off the weapon. In this example right here, I have an imprecise additive and a precise additive. The imprecise additive you'll see right here and the pre precise additive you'll see right here. I'll discuss this right here in a minute. One thing to note is that even though that we moved the hands on the precise additive animation, its distance from the right hand to the left hand is the same as the distance from the right hand to the left hand on the reference pose that we are using. This means that when deltas are applied to the arms, they will be applied proportionally. And so when we apply the additive animation on any animation, they will all, both hands will be offset proportionally. On this one, however, this was not the case. We offset one hand in relation to each other. And so when we apply that as an additive, we cannot properly correct the hand positioning. So in this case, the hands were offset. I'll discuss this issue with the arm locking in a second. Another thing to note, and I, I went ahead and uh, set this up here as well. Whenever you're applying a rifle aiming animation, or in this case, uh, I applied a melee rifle attack animation to a running animation, and you'll see the results that we got. There are ways to fix this. And I will discuss that in the next video. But in this video, it's important to note that whenever you apply an additive animation, uh, it, it doesn't just depend on the animation you're applying it to. I mean, it, let me rephrase that. It's not important just to consider additive animations, but it's also and how you create them, but it's also important that you take into consideration the animation you're applying it to. And so in this situation, we're applying it to an animation, which is an unarmed running animation, and the arms are not in synchronicity. They are, as one arm moves forward, the other one is moving back and away from the other one. So the arms are always moving away or towards each other. Because of this, when we apply this additive animation, we just simply apply it, you'll see the effects that we get. It is important to note that we can easily correct this. Uh, one method is just to uh, apply the arms uh, directly as a non-additive animation onto an ar a layered blend per bone that allows us to only apply that onto the arms. So that's one method. Another method to address this would be dynamic additive layering. So moving on, now I will discuss why this animation looks like this. So even though we did not offset the hands in relation to each other, in this case, it looks like the hand is displaced. Uh, that's not actually the case. The IK target is where it's supposed to be on the barrel of the rifle. The problem is, is because of the animation we're applying it to and the additive that we're applying to it, it created a situation where the hands were so offset from one another that the target location was out of reach of the hand. Basically, what we are doing is on the additive animation, we're rotating the pelvis and, the, and all the spine bones, and we're moving this clavicle back, and we move this other one slightly forward, 
And so what ends up happening is that the, uh, the virtual bones will respect the offset of the hands, but because of the way that we set this up, it actually created a scenario where the target was out of reach. There is actually a way to fix this though, using more advanced techniques, which I will go into in a later video. But I'll go ahead and show you this technique. It's set up on this and you can uh, do this yourself if you're following along. And all I'm doing is connecting this and this is uses that dynamic additive technique and if we come back over here, you'll see it's fixed. And that's without layering. Okay, never mind. I lied. We layered. <laughs> uh, so anyway, remember I told you in some cases uh, you might actually need to layer things. So it's important to know when and when you can't fix things using layering. Or when you should use layering to fix something. And when you shouldn't, I should say. So let me just set this back. So in some scenarios, it might actually make more sense that if, for example, you're creating a rifle reload anim additive animation, that you create it from a pose where the character is holding the rifle. Sometimes it's okay to create your additive animations uh, as unarmed and then apply them over the top of armed animations and using some techniques you can actually fix stuff like this and as well as understanding how all this works it really leads to being able to overcome stuff like that but there are still situations where you might actually prefer to tailor those additive animations specifically for based off of the pose that the character will be in that's what this is basically talking about. I might actually uh, replace this example with maybe a rifle reload animation later on. But that basically covers it, guys. I hope I explained it that well to you. I redid this video probably about 20 times. Uh, so anyway, I will see you guys in the next video where we will cover virtual bones in more depth. And we will create a project from scratch where we create a scenario where it will be needed for hand correction. In uh, the project that we will be creating, we will be creating a rifle aim pose and a uh, basic breathing animation, and we will be additively adding those onto the base locomotion animation, and then we will be correcting the hand uh, the hand offsets. And I will see you in the next video, guys.